and welcome back to the FPL Tom YouTube channel. In today's video, we're going to cover the best wildcard ahead of game week 11, but this wildcard does have a huge twist. It has been built around Fantasy Football Fix's projected points algorithm. What a mouthful that was. But yeah, this team consists of 11 players who are all projected to score kind of the highest points over the next five game weeks. It's going to be a really interesting video to kind of see what players are projected to do well, what ones have been messed out. There is quite a few shocks within this team. I'm going to say that right now at the start of the video. I'll also leave a link to Fantasy Football Fix's website down in the description below. I'm not sponsored by them or affiliated with them in any single way, but would kind of love to be. So if anyone's out there that has a link or you know can sort us out that would be absolutely amazing but yeah that's kind of enough waffle from me we are trying to hit 1000 subs on the channel as well so if you do enjoy the content please like comment and subscribe but yeah let's get in to this game week 11 wildcard draft and starting off our game week 11 wildcard draft it is nick Pope in goal. As you can see with the players, we do have their name, the fixture, and then the projected points over the next five game weeks. Nick Pope was the highest projected points over the next five in terms of goalkeepers, which did surprise me a little bit. I was expecting kind of an Edison or a Gaeta, considering the good fixtures that they do have, but I guess the blank for City does kind of impact his projected points. But it is Nick Pope, who is our goalkeeper, 24.7 points over the next six. Quite a mixed bag of fixtures coming up for Newcastle, Manchester United, Everton, Tottenham, Aston Villa, Southampton, and then Chelsea just before the World Cup. I'm a little bit concerned with Nick Pope as well. I'm, I took him out of my team this week to get Gaeta and Zaha in. Just a budget kind of issue. I would have kept Nick Pope if I could get Zaha easily, but I couldn't. But Newcastle this season have only kept three clean sheets so far. It always seems like they're going to concede one or two goals. I'd much rather have a Kieran Trippier if I was looking for a Newcastle defender within my side. But the algorithm has predicted Nick Pope to get the most points among goalkeepers. Do you think that's right? Leave that down in the comments below. I do think he is a very good shout if you are potentially looking for a goalkeeper on your wildcard. I do really like him and the algorithm also favours him quite heavily. Moving into the back line, we do start with Trent Alexander-Arnold. Now, this one completely shocked me when I saw that he was projected to score the most points out of all defenders on this list. 27 expected points and Liverpool do have a lot of favourable fixtures after kind of the Manchester City game in game week 11. West Ham, Nottingham Forest, Leeds, Tottenham and Southampton and the algorithm is kind of predicting that with the Nottingham Forest, Leeds and Southampton games expecting Trent to get 5.2 and 5.4 points respectively. But that 27 points is going to be more than he's made all, all like so far this season. Currently, he's only collected 24 points. There's also a massive concern over him potentially being injured as well as he was was subbed off for Joe Gomez at halftime in the game against Arsenal. For me, this one is absolutely like ludicrous. I don't think. Trent is worth his price tag at the moment. He's not getting the attacking returns. His defensive data and Liverpool's defensive data has kind of fallen off a cliff as well. So, yeah, for 7.3, I think he's down to now, 7.3 million. I just don't think it's worth it. The algorithm does, and I'm, you know, I usually go off kind of these metrics, but for me, it seems a little bit of a strange one. Let me know what you think of that one. Moving on to a defender who's gone a little bit under the radar and was quite a surprise when I saw he was the third highest scoring defender in here on the projected points model. 22.5 points sorry, over the next kind of five game weeks. It is Eric Dyer. Now, Eric Dyer is currently the highest scoring Spurs defender. Yeah, I, I, did, I didn't even know that. 39 points for him so far this season. And it's kind of a little bit of a shock. Obviously, people have been mixing around with Perisic and Sessegnon and Royale. But maybe we should have just not bothered with all these kind of rotation wingbacks. And maybe for Spurs, we should just be focusing on the centre-backs who are nailed, who are playing every single week. And Eric Dyer is one of those players who's pretty much played every single game for uh, Spurs so far this season. So maybe that's something to consider when we do look at our own teams going forward is when Spurs do have a good fixture run, maybe we don't go for the likes of Perisic. Maybe we don't go for the players like Royale who are so prone to rotation and so prone to just coming off early 
early and yes they do have that massive upside but with the la like the big depth that they have within the wing back positions maybe it's just worth going for a little bit of a cheaper option maybe someone like eric dyer and just getting the consistent clean sheen points moving on to our final defender and it is uh, Anderson from Crystal Palace. Obviously, a lot of people bought in Crystal Palace defenders this week and were a little bit disappointed, but I do think the good fixtures, the clean sheets are going to come back for Crystal Palace. Obviously, last season, I think they were fourth for expected conceded. This year, not doing as well. Currently down at 16th for XG conceded. But the reason I think the algorithm has picked Anderson as one of the top scoring defenders, the good fixtures, Palace are predominantly in history league, we've seen they are a good defense anderson also has quite a bit of threat from set pieces as well saw that at the weekend nearly got himself two goals against leeds united so i think that's why the algorithm has favored him it was much favored him over uh, mark gahey as well by around two points as well so that probably is where they are expecting him to score one goal over the kind of that period of time the next five game weeks i definitely think it is worth bringing in a crystal palace defender over this next period of games up until the world cup it is really good fixtures the algorithm is very much favoring kind of players from crystal palace as well and you can see why they are doing that but yeah that was kind of the defense let me know what you think about it some very very rogue shouts within this defense from the algorithm but let me know what you think of it down in the comments below but let's move on to the midfield within this side moving on to the midfield we do start with james madison now i own madison very happy to own madison obviously it wasn't an amazing performance against bournemouth but leicester were pretty much on a whole very disappointing during that game but the good fixtures for leicester do keep on coming crystal palace leeds wolves manchester city everton and west ham and the algorithm over the next two is absolutely favoring james madison to go and absolutely smash it 29.1 points over the next five and in game week 12 he is the highest projected points among all players at 6.3 so potentially we could be looking at game week 12 captain material for james madison i you know there's a lot of people going out there i think this is going to be a big week where a lot of the player base is going to be split split sorry we don't have harland so we don't have our perma captain we don't have kdb it is going to be who do we kind of go for within this run who's going to look good who's who do we kind of fancy because spurs also take on manchester united as well which isn't an easy game which kind of for some people will rule out son and kane and and yeah, leads at home and he's projected to score 6.3 points for that one. I think regardless of algorithms, I'd massively, massively be looking to get James Madison in your team up until the World Cup. So I do agree with the algorithm on this one. And potentially he's made a claim for game week 12 captain for me as well. With that kind of nice projected points, 6.3. Let me know what you think of him down in the comments below. Moving on to the next midfielder within our side, it is uh, one again that I don't agree with. I think the algorithm is taking historical data into kind of a large consideration here, not looking at form as it does. And it's put Mo Salah as the highest projected point scorer over the next uh, five game weeks, which is a real, real big shock to me. 39 points expected from him. And there's some absolutely huge, huge points that he's expected to score. Game week 13, against Nottingham Forest away, 7.4. Leads at home the following week, 7.7. .7. And in game week 16, 7.7 .7 again. But for me, I wouldn't be looking to include Mohamed Salah. They have done on this kind of algorithm build, 39 points. But at 12.7 million, two goals, four assists... He's playing a much, much more wider, getting less touches in the box, less shots, less shots on target as well this season. So for me, he's just not justifying that price. You could get a Foden and then go for a Nunes or a Jota up front. I think they are much, much better options or even a Diaz as well if he is kind of fit over this next period. I definitely think we want to be looking at Liverpool players after game week 12 because the good fixtures are coming and obviously, you know, really really good fixtures and we want to be taking advantage of that because at some point Liverpool are going to kick back into gear there's too many good players within that squad for it not to kind of work and for them to get results especially against the likes of Nottingham Forest Leeds and Southampton I think they will start to get back to their best at some point during this run but I don't think Mohamed Salah 
is the player I would potentially be looking for. But the algorithm does have him as the highest scoring player over the next five. Let me know what you think of that down in the comments below. I'm a little bit shocked by that one moving on to the next midfielder it is kind of the highest scoring uh cheaper budget midfielder the six highest projected points over the next five game weeks as well and it is Wilfred Zaha no real surprise that one for me the amazing fixtures on penalties and sticks out with our talisman theory that I've been banging on about all season on penalties he's the main man you expect to see on the Crystal Palace score sheet every single week I really like Wilfred Zaha as well puts himself up for a captain shout as well in game week 12 with his Wolves at home fixture I think you've got to be bringing in Wilfred Zaha for this kind of next five game week period amazing amazing fixtures and the algorithm absolutely backs him as well to absolutely go and smash it Moving on to our final midfielder it is Jared Bowen, a player who I have owned since my game week eight wildcard and have absolutely loved owning him. The algorithm's backing him to do exceptionally well as well over the next five. Do take on Liverpool away in game week 12, which is a little bit of a difficult fixture, but Liverpool out of form at the moment could be very susceptible to a beating on a West Ham team who are starting to get their form back, starting to get the performance as, as well on penalties and also fits win with our talisman theory and I can't believe this I looked his ownership 4.9% that makes him a differential in my eyes an absolutely amazing differential I thought after the past two weeks people would be flooding to bring this man in but they aren't doing it so far which is a little bit of a shock to me I would be suggesting go and buy Jared Bowen this week or Wilfred Zaha if you do have the funds available he's projected to score higher points than Luis Diaz and Gabriel Martinelli over the next five so very very encouraging data for Jared Bowen owners or people who are potentially looking to bring Jared Bowen in that was the midfield within our side I think there are three excellent picks in there obviously Madison Zaha and Bowen and Salah a little bit of a rogue one I think the algorithm is going to potentially get that one wrong but let's move on to our three forwards within today's side Haaland starts our front line to absolutely nobody's surprise absolutely killing it this season and the algorithm has him scoring 38.9 points over the next five game weeks 0.1 points behind Mohamed Salah and he doesn't have a fixture in game week 12 absolutely unbelievable stuff from Haaland an absolute freak at the moment on his way to breaking Jamie Vardy's record of 11 consecutive games scoring goals absolutely killing it hasn't blanked in FPL as well and his expected points for game week 15 and 16 are absolutely crazy against Fulham in game week 15 expect to score 9.7 points 9.7 absolutely incredible and in game week 16 9.4 as well so i think he's going to be perma captain after game week 12 blank everyone should have him if you don't have him please go and get some mental help honestly absolutely insane insane stuff harlan's doing this year and the algorithm is backing him to absolutely continue to smash it and there's no real surprise the fixtures coming up after that game week 12 blank are absolutely incredible for him but yeah moving on to our next forward it is Gabriel Jesus another player who was um, a little bit of a shock inclusion the second highest projected uh, point scoring forward I thought potentially Kane or maybe like a Nunes or a Jota or someone else would have potentially been in here but the algorithm is favoring Gabriel Jesus to absolutely go and smash it over the next five and that does include a blank as well 32.5 points projected for him amazing fixtures after kind of their game week 12 blank for Arsenal Southampton Nottingham Forest Chelsea and Wolves and that game week 14 fixture against Nottingham Forest projected score 9.5 percent points wow I do think if you own a few Arsenal assets obviously Martinelli or Jesus I would suggest keeping them during the blank try and find other solutions because after that period everyone is going to want to be back on that Arsenal hype train and they're looking good they're looking good for their title contentions as well good fixtures coming up good players as well and yeah projected points absolutely killing it is Jesus and for very very good reason so far this season my only concern is I don't think he's like he's not on penalties is he so we saw that yesterday Saka's on the penalties so I think that does take away a little bit from his projected points kind of modeling that 9.5 against Nottingham Forest is absolutely outrageous but 
I don't think I'd be captain him still. I think I'd still stick with Erling Haaland. But moving on to our final player of today's video and of this game week 11 kind of algorithm built uh, draft. It is a man who, uh, yeah, I never expected to be included on one of the drafts. It is Danny Welbeck, the highest scoring forward under 6.5 million. And I think that's mainly down to the Nottingham Forest fixture in game week 12. The algorithm absolutely loving that fixture. Soon as anyone plays Forest, the points for players are absolutely bumped up to the roof. But I kind of like Danny Welbeck. He, um, I watched the Spurs-Brighton game. And he very much passed the eye test for me, getting plenty of shots off, getting in the right positions. And it was a little bit like, maybe I do bring him in. Game week 11, they take on Brighton. Game week 12, they take on Nottingham Forest. Then it's Man City and Chelsea back to back. And then it's Wolves and Aston Villa. So maybe, I like this is a real bold shout here, but maybe I might be looking to bring in Danny Welbeck to my side. Yet to score this season. So, you know, we have absolutely nothing to go on. But pass the eye test for me. The kind of expected data for under 6.5 million forwards is very favourable over him <clears throat> over him as well, beating the likes of Solanke and Daka as well. So there is a potential case that Welbeck could be like that undercard, that under kind of guy that no one's really looking at who could absolutely pop off in the next few as our kind of Mitrovic replacement if we get news that he is injured. Moving on to the bench very quickly, we do have Danny Ward, the highest projected points scoring goalkeeper under 4.5 million. Same with Nico Williams and Emerson, both expected to do quite well for their price point. And Anderson as well, the highest projected point scorer under 4.6 million that was the team that was the game week 11 algorithm fantasy football fix projected points team let me know what you think of it let me know if you're going to look to include any of your players in your draft or if you're going to bring them in through free transfers like i said we are trying to hit 1000 subs on the fpl tom youtube channel it would be absolutely amazing if we could do that thank you very much for watching if you do have any questions do leave them down below in the comments section as i answer all questions there about all matter of things thank you very much for watching good luck this game week and i hope you have a very good day